That was so much fun, Kat exclaimed and Lizzie laughed. You guys are nuts, I exclaimed laughing along. Did you see his face? Lizzie snorted and we all burst in a fit of laughter once again. He looked so confused, Kat exclaimed, and his girlfriend. Oh my God, I can't. I laughed. At our trick that we played on random guys as a challenge, Kat was challenged to go to a random guy and start eating his food, and Lizzie went to the guy and asked him for money aggressively. The poor guys looked so confused. Both of them gave up. The guy left his food with Kat, and Lizzie scared the poor guy and his girlfriend. He gave her $50 and went away without even looking back. This weekend night is so much fun. Coming to this amusement park was the best decision of my life. Of course, with my friends. First the amusement park and then dinner with my friends. Now we walk with beers in our hand. Cat, who is dressed in the fanciest pink dress that stops below her just perfect ass. She is the Barbie of our trio. She has the best figure of us all. Just like those models. And my Lizzie is blessed in the department of cakes and cherries. Yo, her top is fighting for its life and those leather pants are just wow. She knows how to carry all those juicy curves and I'm mediocre here. I had to go to the gym five days a week to maintain that figure. But thank goodness I'm not so lost in those departments, it's just average. Yo, seriously, this weekend is all I needed. That job of ours is like a leech sucking on our blood. I spoke when we were over the fit of laughter. Seriously, man, we may have signed for the best companies, but they have us by the balls, Lizzie snorts. Oh, you got balls I never knew. She teased and we all started laughing again. Okay, serious girls, now we both have done our challenge. It's YN's turn. She spoke sinisterly and I rolled my eyes. Are you ready, sweetheart? Lizzie teased, as that's what the annoying manager of ours addresses me as. Ugh, bring it. I ain't no fear anything. I sassed out though internally I'm definitely freaking out because I've known these two since diapers and I know this duo can't bring anything good. Lizzie whispered something in her ear and looked at Kat, and she to her, and then they both looked at me with the smirk that blew the alarms in my head. Now, 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 are you ready, sweetheart? They both asked at once and I shook my head. These two are like children sometimes. See that guy in a leather jacket? They pointed at my back and turned to him. Go and dance with him on every time we touch, I get this feeling. Here, take this earpod, and now, action. Cat ended and Lizzie stuffed the earpod in my ear, and I looked at them with my jaw hanging low. But my protest was left hanging in the air when they both pushed me to the guy. Nervously, I walked to the guy with the song blasting in my earpod. He was talking on the phone. The chorus hit, and with a sigh, I took his hand and touched my bare shoulder with his index finger. He stared at me with a raised eyebrow, and I continued until the chorus ended. Once I was done, I looked at him and he had this look on his face. I was too embarrassed, so I ran to my friends, and with my elbow in each of them, I walked us away from the scene. They kept on laughing, but that was embarrassing. Once away from those eyes, I also started laughing. That was amazing, and we all laughed. FYI, we share an apartment. We all went to our home laughing and teasing each other. Oh my God, I'm late. Lizzie woke me up, but I slept late, and here I am rushing to the office. I need to get to the office before it hits eight. I passed a huge man. Well, at five feet three, he is huge for me. I passed him knocking my shoulder with his. I barked a rushed sorry and rushed to the elevator. Finally, I was in at the last moment or I would have been late. I huffed and turned around and saw it. Before the elevator closed, the man from last night, but it was just a glance since the elevator door closed. I must be dreaming like last night. Oh, that was some wild dream about a stranger. Reaching my desk, I said hi to my colleagues. Both my friends are in different departments than me, so we meet in the lunch break. Hi, Steve. I said hello to him. Hi, girl. Looking hot today. He complimented me. He is gay. You look pretty hot yourself, too, I told him, and we both giggled. Tieran came running and sat on his desk, as did everyone else. What's happening? I asked, leaning over my desk to peek into his side. You don't know? He asked. I frowned. No. He made a face on my admission and spoke. You again ignored the group chat? I bit my lower lip and he shook his head. Company's CEO. His voice ended and his eyes widened. I gave him a face and that's when I heard it. 
Well, is there some tea? I heard a deep voice behind me and the hair on my nape stood in attention. I turned around and saw the man from last night. My cheeks heated and my manager glared at me. Ah, sir, this is YN. Shall we move on? My manager tried to save me. Of course he would. I once saved him from his wife when almost got caught red-handed while smoking. Nice to meet you, sir. I bowed 90 degrees and didn't raise my head until he was gone. I blew a breath and then I quickly looked into the chat. I'm truly fucked. Meeting in 15 minutes with the CEO and I'm not prepared. I quickly thorough everything and told the newbies under me to if they are prepared. Now here we are in the meeting room. Everyone is involved. That's the simple quality of this firm that every opinion holds its value. Newbie or experience doesn't matter. My interns did a splendid work in that, and since they represent me, that's a plus. But there is a problem. The glare or stare. I can't shake it off. I know he is staring at me and I couldn't muster up the courage to look and confirm. I cannot. If the stare is this heated, then imagine the eye contact. It's been 45 minutes in this dark room with presentation and presentation, but I couldn't focus at all due to the heavy, forbidding, intense feeling. Finally, the meeting was over, and that's when I turned my head. And yes, his eyes were latched on me. My inhale halted in the midair and I held his intense stare. My body was on fire and that too for a stranger. The proximity of desire was so intense, I could feel his desire crawling on my skin. A wicked smirk lifted on the corner of his lips and I licked my lips in nervousness. Miss Lee, bring the file of your interns to my office. His deep voice announced and he left the room. Everyone stared at me. My manager glared at me. Go YN, didn't you hear him? He told me and I stood up taking my sweet time, trying to delay facing him. Everyone left giving me apologetic smiles because he is famous for being cold and cruel. I took the file of my interns from my desk and slowly made my way to his office. I take a huge breath in and out outside the door. You can do this YN, fighting. With determination and putting on my best smiles, I knocked and opened the door to announce my presence. As if the knock was not enough already. Come in, Miss Lee. He ordered. Miss Chen, please do not disturb me. I have to discuss a few things with Miss Lee, he told his secretary. She bowed 90 degrees and left the room. When she left the room, he stared at me with those intense eyes and stood at a good distance from his desk, melting. Put the file on the desk and move back to your place. He ordered and I obliged. Now kneel and crawl to me. He ordered. Sir, I don't th- I was cut off. Do as you are told, baby girl. His command was so stoic, I bit my bottom lip and went to my knees and hand and crawled to him. All the time I kept the eye contact. Once in front of him, I stopped and sat back on my heel. He stared at me wildly and I couldn't help but bite on my lower lip. He cupped my chin and rasped out. What we talked about biting your lip, baby girl. I gulped and released my lower lip while staring at him through my lashes. Are you mute? He asked. No, I replied breathily. No what? He asked. No, daddy. I replied, knowing too well. Good girl. He praised me and caressed my cheek. But you are also a bad girl, aren't you? He spoke and I gulped. He sat back in his chair and I stared at him. Come here, princess. He told me, tapping his lap. I stood up and parked my ass on his lap. He wrapped his arm around my waist and caressed my thigh. Tell me, princess. What was it last night? He asked. I dot dot. My friends challenged me to do that dance trend with you, I stuttered. But what if it was not me? What if someone else touched what's mine? He asked while squeezing my inner thigh. I'm sorry, Daddy, I told him in a pout. He smiled. Take off your skirt and these stockings. I would hate anyone to see those ripped except myself. He ordered, and with trembling hands I unfastened my belt and took off those two pieces of clothing. He caressed my cakes and waist and in an instant bent me over his desk. I gasped, and a hard slap landed on my cakes. 
then another. Whose body is this? He asked while caressing my burning cakes. Yours, I replied in a moan as his hand landed again on my cakes. Who gets to touch this beautiful body? He asked while keeping his assault on my poor cakes. You, I replied breathily. Who am I? He asked, cupping my throat and pulling my face to look at me, my spine bowing in the opposite direction. Dad, he squeezed his hand on my throat in a warning. John Jungkook, I whispered, my eyes dropping with hunger and lust. And John Jungkook never shares. Do you get that? He said, and I nodded as much as I could in that position. He stared at me with a frown and his wild eyes searched for me. His chest rose up and down and I cupped his jaw. Don't pull out. I'm ready. I told him and he fisted my hair. Our relationship started as sugar daddy and sugar baby. Though I don't need one yet, he was so persistent and so tempting and our relationship evolved. Five years of togetherness and not a single person knows about our relationship. Five years of us and he asked my permission to put his child in me and I denied because I was not ready. I have never been away from him for this long and that's when I realised I can't live without this man. I would love nothing more to give this beautiful man what he desires of me, especially on his birthday. He joined our forehead as he started moving again. He teased me and I looked at him. I sighed contentedly and smiled at him. Never knew slow fucking could make you this dreamy. He spoke, placing a kiss between my cherries. You drained me, I rasped out the complaint, and he chuckled. Once I felt stable, I pulled myself up and cupped his face with both hands. I placed a soft kiss on his lips and spoke. Happy birthday, mi amor. He smiled and snuggled in my neck. Now I have to go back and get to work, I whined. You don't, he said, and I looked at him, making a face. Careful, princess. I'm still thinking about you coming twice without asking me. He threatened me, and I smiled. Oh, that I love so much. I told him lying back on the table bare and contented for him. He went to change. He always keeps a spare suit with him for such occasions. When he came back dressed, I was also dressed and almost looked presentable. Where do you think you are going, princess? He asked, making me gasp. Oh, God, you scared me, I scolded him. He lifted his eyebrow and his brown orbs ran from head to toe over my very dressed body. I should get back to work, I told him and he came near me. I kept marching and I was stepping back because that's what he wanted or he would have stopped. I fell on his chair and he pinned me on his chair. Do you think that was it? That I'm done with you? He asked, eyes full of hunger. I bit my lower lip. Don't you think those pink lips will look more pretty somewhere wrapped around? He spoke shamelessly. We are in the office. I tried to get some sense in this young and hot and nasty lad. And do you think I care the least bit? Well, you didn't take offense to the place a few moments ago. Instead, you were rather enjoying a bit more fervently, I must say. He and his nasty shameless talk. Then what are you going to do, Daddy? Take me in front of those employees of yours, I asked, biting back a smile. That's exactly what I am going to do. He said and smirked. My smile flattered and he took the chance to pick me up in bridal style. What are you doing? I asked, hitting his arm. Staking my claim. He simply replied. My cheeks turned pink when I saw all the eyes staring at me. No gawking at me. Miss Chen, my fiancé here is rather tired and we are taking off for today. Please take care of the matters on my behalf and cancel the meetings. Jungkook announced, and I stared at him shocked. I hid my face in his neck. Once we were in the car, I hit him on the chest as he buckled me. Fuck you, I told him, and he smirked. Patience, princess. I would doing more than just fucking when we get home. He spoke, and I hid my face in my hands. God, this bunny, but he is my bunny. <laughs>